Hi, I'm Toby from AWS and welcome to London for This Is My Architecture. I'm here today with Adam from CloudReach. Hi, Adam. Hi there. Hi. Um, so we're going to talk today about SEPTA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so can you tell me about the, the background to SEPTA and, and why you came up with it? Yeah, absolutely. So um, SEPTA is a tool for supercharging your use and management of CloudFormation um, and is largely born out of the, the fact that uh, CloudFormation is our preferred manner of deploying and managing infrastructure, uh, but it can become quite difficult to manage large numbers of stacks across multiple environments, across multiple regions, across multiple accounts. Mm. Um, so we built SEPTA to help with that management and add some additional features along the way as well. Thanks, Adam. So give me an example of how a customer might use SEPTA. Sure. We work with a lot of organizations that use SEPTA um, to organize all of their CloudFormation um, stacks and deploy them, again, across multiple regions and, and environments in a very easy and quick manner. Okay. Um, so one example of this is we, have, we work with a, an organization that has built a large library of very generic CloudFormation templates with, with, um, with SEPTA and uh, has been able to enable their data center migration to happen much faster uh, by using SEPTA to manage those CloudFormation templates and enable their developers to deploy stacks faster. Okay. Talk me through the components we've got here. Uh, what's the environment config and the stack config? Is that, is that part of SEPTA? Yeah, sure. So one of the core um, tenets of, of SEPTA is environments. And environments are really just logical uh, groupings of CloudFormation stacks, effectively. Mm -hmm. um, they're comprised of CloudFormation templates, um, stack config files, and environment config files, which are all written in YAML. Uh, the nice thing about environments is that they can collect together large amounts of, of stacks and you can treat them effectively as kind of one cloud formation entity, mm -hmm. which means you can perform a SEPTA deploy environment and deploy multiple uh, cloud formation stacks all at once. And SEPTA will do all the hard work for you of resolving all of the inter-stack dependencies, inputs and outputs to all of the different stacks that you have within your environment. So we've got SEPTA over here. What's the role of the resolvers? Um, so the resolvers are pieces of code that allow you to dynamically set um, attributes within your configuration files. Um, these can effectively pull information from anywhere, really. Right. Um, if you're using Scepter as part of a CI or build um, pipeline, or even from a developer workstation, you can have a resolver pull in an environment variable and populate mm. entries within your config file. Like an AMI or... Um, Exa exactly. It can yeah. pull information from AWS, like AMI IDs, as you mentioned, based mm. on tag and, and that type of thing. So you can dynamically populate your uh, configuration files using resolvers. Okay, so once we've resolved our um, variables within the environment config with the resolvers, what happens next? Once the uh, configuration files are set, you can perform a, a, a launch of your environment. And uh, when you launch an environment, you can also set up uh, hooks, um, which are another scepter concept. Um, and again, these are pieces of code that, that are run, or you can have run, um, before every CloudFormation stack deployment and afterwards. Okay. Um, so this might be, for instance, a prehook could be the zipping up of a Lambda function, uploading it to S3 before deploying that out via CloudFormation. Um, it might be the scaling down of an auto-scaling group before a CloudFormation stack update. Um, the post-hook uh, could be things like accepting a VPC peering connection after the deployment of a network, yep. or even setting up of a, a VPN connection on your, uh, your network appliance after building a new network. Or maybe you could do uh, like an Active Directory domain join or something like that. Well, exactly. Uh, yeah. One of the other use cases we have for this is we have a, an enterprise customer um, who's using this um, to um, update an on-premise resource uh, CMDB. So every time resources are created or updated via CloudFormation, those CMDB entries are automatically um, updated um, as part of the deployment. Okay. So we've run our pre-hooks, we've run our post-hooks. Uh, over here, we've got our stack. So this is the end product of our SEPTA run. Yeah, exactly. Um, so all of this is part of the kind of the SEPTA launch um, workflow. And like I said, you end up with a set of CloudFormation stacks. Um, SEPTA supports uh, everything that's natively supported by CloudFormation. Um, so this includes updating, um, destroying, uh, creating stacks, um, as well as change sets, um, mm -hmm. so that you can use those to never get surprised by updates that happen to your, uh, to your stacks. Uh, but also CloudFormation server roles. Mm -hmm. So you can have multiple stacks um, and of your users of Scepter uh, can specify a service role mm -hmm. and so they never need to have the access to the underlying infrastructure that are described by your stacks, right. only the ability to pass the role that actually creates them. So that behaves like a security proxy then? Exactly. Yeah. And because Scepta makes it easy for you to split up your infrastructure into lots of small CloudFormation stacks, you can get very granular with your permissioning model um, around that as well. So we've got our stacks here. You know, uh, an environment might include a number of stacks, and let's mm -hmm. say that environment is you know, e-commerce production mm -hmm. or e-commerce development or something like that. Yeah. 
Okay, and, and which um, AWS services does Scepter support? Um, so it, uh, Scepter supports everything that CloudFormation supports. And um, one of the nice things and some of the use cases that we have also seen is the support of um, AWS services that are not supported by CloudFormation. So launching those as part of a hook, uh, describing your configuration for that service in, as part of your Scepter environment, and then writing a hook um, to actually deploy um, those AWS services, even if they aren't supported by CloudFormation natively. So how can customers or partners get hold of Scepter? Sure, so Scepter is open sourced. Um, you can find it at github.com um, slash cloudreach slash Scepter. Um, we have documentation and examples to, to get up and running with as well. Super, okay. Well, look, thanks Adam for sharing Scepter with us today. And thanks everyone for joining This Is My Architecture.